Today in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna show you a really exciting plugin called Bullseye, and it's all made possible by my friends over at FX Factory. Now what Bullseye allows you to do is to zoom in on a subject, track the camera to them, and then zoom out. It also has a bunch of other features that I'm really excited to show, so with that being said, let's dive right in. You're gonna need to install Bullseye using the link down below. There's also a coupon code for 10% off, so make sure you use that code at checkout. But once you've installed it, you can go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro. Now Bullseye is gonna install in two different locations. You're gonna have it in your effects and you're also going to have it up in your titles. There's different reasons for using it in different ways. I'm gonna show you the benefits of using it as a title first and then show you how to use it as an effect. So what we're first gonna do is selecting Bullseye in our titles, we're going to select Solo. Now if I click and drag this down onto my timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and enable my video inspector so I have all of my controls and I'll push Command Control 1 to go ahead and hide the titles. Now, now that I have this title down on the timeline, you'll see that I have this little rectangle here. I'm just gonna click and drag over the subject that I want to track. Then from there, I can actually use the tracking settings that are down here at the bottom. But there is also this extra gear icon and I recommend you use that before you start tracking. So by clicking this, we can set it to track both the position or position and scale. I'll go ahead and set it as position and scale. Then underneath that, you have the options to set your smoothing. Currently, it's set to high and I'm actually just gonna leave it at high. Now that we have the tracking set up, we can go ahead and click this icon to track forward. This is gonna open this dialog window and quickly track our subject. Now that all the tracking's done, nothing is going to happen just yet. That is because we need to go into our inspector and change it from set tracker over to set pan and zoom. Now it's still not quite set, but in this menu, we have some additional options we can set. For example, I can set the final position. So it did track it to his face. However, if we want to offset him over here to the left side, we can do just that. Or if we want him dead center, we can set him up right here. Then on top of that, we can scroll down further. We can adjust our zoom level. Underneath that, there is the background blur option. Now, if I enable that, you'll see how everything around him is blurred. So you can use this if you really want to set focus on a particular subject. I, again, am going to disable this for now. And finally, at the bottom is the animation in and out. And this is something I'm really excited about. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the animation set and we're gonna leave the duration at one second. I'm also gonna change the animation curve from linear over to something like exponential in and out. That's my personal favorite for this animation. Now, if we wanna see the animation take place, we need to change it from set pan and zoom over to show effect. If we watch it, we'll see that the camera zooms in, locks on his face over the duration of this title, and then zooms out. So this is a really, really cool feature, and by using it as a title, we can set this to happen at any time. Now something you should take note of is if you adjust where this title is on your timeline, you're gonna need to retrack it. So if I drag the solo over to the right side because we wanna track a separate part, then we're gonna need to go ahead, we'll set this back to set tracker, we'll set it over his face, and once again, track his face to lock onto his running. So now if we set this back over to show effect and push play, we will quickly zoom in on his face just like so. So the benefit of using this as a title is we can easily set exactly where this animation happens on our video. But if you know you want the effect to happen over the entire duration of your clip, that is when you're gonna wanna use the effect parameters. So we're gonna take a look over here and in our effects browser, you can see we also have picture in picture, side by side and split screen. I'm going to go ahead and show you the picture in picture effect. By clicking and dragging this onto our clip, we again get this tracker. I'm going to set the box over our climber here and then we'll track forward. Now that it's done tracking, we just need to jump over here, change it from set tracker over to set pan and zoom. Again, we can set how far it zoomed in, but something you'll notice is this circle area. This circle is indicating what our picture and picture cutout is gonna be. So we know that everything within the circle is going to show up in the final effect. Now that we have our zoom set, we can change the set picture in picture effect. So now we can actually click and drag our picture and picture effect up here to the top right corner. 
we can scale it so we can make it a lot larger and you'll notice how this line dynamically shifts as we scale it so if we shrink it down the line gets longer or scale it up it gets smaller so i really like that added little feature then on top of that we can change the shape we could go into enable the show line or disable that we could change the line thickness scrolling down we can enable stuff like a drop shadow which i really like and then of course there is the animation in and out so we have all of our settings let's go ahead and change this over to show effect and if we push play we can see our picture in picture pops up on the screen it's tracked to our climber even though our shot is moving all over the place so with side by side i'll click and drag that onto my clip and i'll get our tracker over our person here and we'll go ahead and track forward now that we've done that, we can change it from set tracker over to set pan and zoom. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom way in. And then we can go ahead and do set the side by side. And in here we can set the size of our video on the right side and left side. We can also set how big of a gap there is. We can enable a drop shadow. And finally, the last setting is we can enable a background. Now you could do it with the drop zone here. That's a nice feature to have. Or if you're like me, you could just bring in any backdrop that you typically use in your videos and you should be good to go. And last but not least is split screen. So I'll go ahead and click and drag this onto my clip. I'll set this box about the size of our car and we'll go ahead and track forward. Now that it's all tracked, we can change the mode from set tracker over to set pan and zoom. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom way in here. Then from there, we can go to set pan and zoom original. This is the original shot and I actually like how it looks so I'm not gonna change it at all. Then we can set the split screen effect I'm gonna leave the duration at one second. Let's drag up the width and we could change the color on that line if we wanted to, just like so. And finally, we'll select show effect and if we push play, we can see there's this great animation showing the car zoomed in. It's got the tracking all happening on it while showing the original shot over here on the left hand side. And then at the end, the animation goes away. So again, you could apply that effect with the effects browser or you could use a title. So that is a quick look over at Bullseye. I am really, really excited about the possibilities with this plugin. So if you're interested, make sure you use the link down below and use the code, the Final Cut Bro for 10% off. It does support me as a creator. So thank you so much for using that. And with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.